First thing that we need to do is we know that we're going to have to do screens. Now, libgdx um, does allow us to uh, set up for screens pretty easily. Um, so actually what we're going to do is we're going to have a super class that we're going to call this a um, game. Um, if we looked at it, Alt Enter. We need to install it. So now it's imported. Um, let's go ahead and click on it. So if I click Control and then click on it, I can see that class. So here's this game class, which is it's implementing that application listener that we were already extending. Um, it has some methods that we're going to have to use. We're going to have to dispose, uh, pause, resume, render, and resize. So we're going to have to deal with that. Um, also gives us a method for setting a screen. Okay. Um, so the first thing that we're going to do, so we can set the screen and we can get the screen. Um, the first thing that we're going to do is to start setting up some of this. So let's go to our core and we're going to right click and we're going to go and create some, um, a new folder. Uh, so let's go to a package and let's just call this one screens. Screens and go ahead and hit OK. Now when we think of our games, um, we know that we're going to have a loading screen. So let's go ahead and name that. We'll just call that um, loading screen. Go ahead and hit OK. We're going to create another one. We know we're going to have like a main menu screen, so main menu screen. We know that we're going to have a main game screen. This is where the entire game runs. Okay, and we know that we're going to have, uh, let's say, a credit screen or an end game screen. All right, so now that we have those set up, those are going to be extending um, the screen. So if I went into any one of those, it's going to have to be using uh, an interface for screen. So uh, I could just start at this credit screen and say implements screen. Now, it's going to say, well, what do I want to do? I want to use this interface right here. Um, and now I get an error. Well, if I check my error, it's because I need to implement some methods. Okay, so I could go ahead and click implement methods. And these are all the stuff that I have to use um, to make so that I wouldn't have to have my um, credit screen as like an abstract. So I need to have a show method, a render, a resize, a pause, a resume, a hide, and a dispose. So I'm going to go ahead and put all of those in there. Okay. Now I need to do that for all of them. So implement screen for all of them. Implement screen. And I need to implement those methods. Alt enter will get me into there. I can go ahead and implement those methods. I click OK. There they are. Main menu screen. Let's do that again. Implements screen. The game, uh, the super for game and screens, they work hand in hand. Um, that's why we're doing it so that we don't have to have one behemoth uh, class that is running everything. So we want stuff kind of broken up and modular. So we're just working on doing the screens right now. 
All right, so I got my loading screen. Now everything's running here. Um, I have this. Now my main class, it's not doing anything with those screens because I have to actually set it up. So when I'm running my Redbeard run, I need to be able to do something with those screens. So if I go ahead and create those screens here, um, then I can pass information to them. I can pass this batch because I don't really want to have a lot of these. I want to really only have one and I'm just passing it around to everything that needs to use it. Um, so then when the, the main Redbeard run game or your main game class ends up getting destroyed, then it's disposing it properly. So I'm going to go ahead and create a bunch of uh, private uh, variables. So let's do private loading screen and we'll call it loading screen short and private uh, main menu screen and it's showing up for me I just hit tab main menu screen private because I don't really want anything else accessing it unless I'm setting it up to travel that way um, we have a loading screen main menu main game and we need a private credit screen Credit screen helps if I spell it. Credit screen. Okay, so now we have all of those. Let's go ahead and import that. Alt Enter. Okay, so it's imported those into my main game class. Now we could, once we got into the create, we could do something like because we have that that game, we could just do set screen and call that method from the super. Um, from the game class and we could pass in a screen in there we could say loading screen okay that would be perfectly fine um, I have mine set up a little bit different so that I could um, call and create uh, each one when I need to so what I did and you guys may end up wanting to do it a little bit different but the way that I thought about it is well what if I store only one screen uh, or the creation of each screen and then I just call it um, when I want to go to it so and then I don't recreate another one um, I just pull up the one that already exists so I did a couple things I used an enum so I said public enum and I'm gonna call it screen type and in the screen type I say well what type of screens do I have well I have a load I have a menu I have my game and then I have my credits okay and then with that enum then I could say set up a method that pretty much I'll pass this main class right here this red beard run I'll pass this to every screen and then they can call this method so this method it would be public I'm gonna go public void and say I want to create a screen and then I pass in one of those enums. So if I pass a menu screen, then it's going to create the menu screen that I need. So I can pass in the screen type, which is that enum that I just created. And I just need to give it a variable name. <clears throat> so then I can say, hey, well, I'm starting off with a screen Let's just do screen equals null. I don't have anything for a screen. And then based off of the type that they give me, um, then I'm going to actually change that up. So uh, we could go ahead and 
you could do this with an if statement, uh, if and else if statements. I'm going to do it with a switch where I'm passing in that type. Um, and then I just have my cases. So if I'm case load, I'm doing something. If I'm on case menu or case game and case credits. Okay, so now I need something to, if I pass in that type, then I need to be pulling um, that screen that needs to be created because right now those are just there. I didn't actually create them yet. So if they type that they want to create a screen um, in load, then I'm going to um, kind of do a singleton pattern. So that is if it's null. So if my loading screen is equal to null, then I'm going to create one. Otherwise, I'm just leaving it. Okay, so if it's null, then uh, loading screen equals new loading screen. And in this loading screen, I'm saying that I want to pass an instance or pass a reference to this this main class. So I'm going to use the word this and we'll just keep it like that for now. Okay, so I need to do that basically for every single one. Um, if if it's not null, then I just want to break out of it. All right, so let's just kind of slowly build this up. So if if they type menu, then I'm going to go ahead and um, check if the menu screen, the main menu screen, is no. Doing this makes sure that I always only have one instance of each of those screens. It's not going to accidentally create. Um, and this one, I'm also going to pass this into it. This this is referring to an um, a reference to this Redbeard run, my main game class. Okay, and then I'm going to break. All right, so I'm just going to copy this now and put it in game and just change it so. main game screen and if it's not then create one main game screen main game screen and I'm passing in an instance and then credits will be the same so if credit screen credit screen is null go ahead and create one credit screen new credit screen alright All right, so now that I have that, um, I need to think, well, how am I going to, to use this? So I created the screen. I have a method here, but I need to be able to set that screen. So um, I could go ahead and I could create another method. And let's make this one public. So let's say that I'm in the loading screen. I want to be able to set the screen to a different screen, but I only want to have one instance of it. I don't want it to automatically create another one. So that's what we're basically building in. We have a public void and we're going to call uh, the set screen. And we're going to say we need an enum type. So they say load, you know, set the screen to the load screen. I want only one instance of load screen. So if I set the screen, instead of just me typing it um, and using that game class, I'm going to call that method create screen, and then I can pass in the type, 
and then I can call that type. So we want to we want to be able to call that one back. Okay, so we could just do um, set screen and then put in that type. So if we did this, it would first call this load screen. If it doesn't exist, it's going to create one. And then we're going to be calling that type. Actually, that's not going to do what we want, is it? Um, we, well, let's, let's make a list. Let's store them. We store them in like a, a table. Let's do it like a hash table. So, private hash table. There we go. And we want it to hold um, based off the screen type and the screen. Anything that has that screen interface. Let's just call it screen table. Screen table. Okay. Alright, so then in our create method, we're going to have to create that. Let's go and say screen table equals new hash table, hash table, and there we go. All right, so we have a table now that we can pull it up. We can create the screen. And then we could set the screen based off of that table. So we'll store in that table anything that has that screen. So if we do end up creating that screen, then we should actually put it in that table. So let's do screen table dot put, and then we're going to give it the type. So this would be. Uh, well, this would be our load. This would be this right here, screen type dot load. And then we're going to be throwing in that loading screen. All right, so we call the loading screen. It's going to call that. And then it will be stored there, and we can pull it. So let's do that again, screen table dot put. And we want this one, this one's menu. So it's pulling that enum. And then we can call it main menu screen. All right, so now I'm going to copy this. And I'm basically just going to change it for what we want. So this one is the game. And main game. game screen and then we're going to do this for the credits credits no, it's credit screen okay so now we have those stored in a table and we could call it based on that table so if we want to set the screen we want to set it from that table so screen table we want to get that object and we're going to call it by that type. That makes sense. Okay, so now if we do set screen, if it doesn't exist, it's going to create it. It's going to store it in a table and then we can call it just by calling up that table and pulling that, that value out. So in our create, if we want this to actually start at uh, the load screen, then we could just say set screen and then give that type. So I would say load. And this will call our set screen method, which is going to create that screen and then it's going to set that screen. All right, so 
just so we could see if that's working. Load screen. Let's log a message in the load screen. So let's um, log for libgdx. Um, actually, is pretty easy. We'll just type gdx dot app dot log, and then you've got two pieces for it. Um, this is what I normally do when I'm logging messages. I think that it uh, helps make it a lot easier to um, call them up faster. Um, I'm going to, for every class, um, type up private static final string and then I'm going to assign it as tag equals and then I'll call this class so redbeard run dot class dot get simple name so it'll tell me I'll, um, when I'm logging a message hey uh, redbeard run class and then I can put in my message so if I wanted to log here um, in the create I can have this and this actually it's not really going to get called anymore from the game it's going to be getting called from my screens so I could actually just take this off I'm just going to comment it out so we can go to code we can go to comment with the block comment and that shortcut is control shift and slash okay so this is no longer going to run anymore um, from the main game class I want to log a message though and say that I was in the main game class the redbeard run so gdx.app.log now I could do tag so it'll give me the class name and then I can give a message to myself so I can make sure that I understand what what's happening um, in create method of main game class okay so that's going to get called in the create and then uh, here loading screen we can do the same thing so we're gonna do let me just copy that whole first line private static final this one right here we want to have that in each screen but I'll go ahead and say cancel it's not redbeard run it is loading screen dot class that simple name. so we can put tag in there and we want it to say that we're in that show method in loading screen show method all right so that will show up once now you have a actual constructor if we don't create one we have a default but we're if we wanted to pass that game to it we need to actually call it so go to code and we want to generate alt insert and we want to do a constructor oh, is that there? No way. That's what it is. That's bothersome for me. You know, off of there.
just an old. Alright. so I can get rid of that. Alright. I got rid of it. I clicked off and it actually went away. Okay, so this, if we run this and I start copying down where we are. Pause, resume, hide. Okay. We can start tracking down where this is and I this is a good exercise to actually see how this runs Android um, will tend to run your static stuff first um, and then will run your show every time that screen shows up render will run continuously whenever the screen is resized this method will get called um, if you minimize your game, um, that, so let's say you're on that screen, that's when pause would get called. When you come back to it and you, get, you bring focus back to that game, that's when resume will get called. Um, hide is whenever you go away from one screen. So if I am going to a different screen, this is, then hide will automatically get called, and then i got to deal with it. Um, if I'm actually disposing stuff, so I'm, let's say, in the main game class, um, and I'm destroying the game, I'm closing the application, then game will start calling all the individual screens and disposing of the stuff. So, let's go ahead and I'm going to copy my the stuff that was in the render, that the image and everything. I'm going to copy that and I'm going to put that in the render. And I'm going to say in loading screen render. Okay, now i got to import some things. This batch, I don't have that batch. And that image, I don't have that image. So let's go and pull. I'm going to pull that image. And I'm also going to pull this this batch. So let's go and hold that there. And I'm going to go into make a some class variables. Now just because I did that doesn't mean that they exist past them, and I got to actually create them. So um, and I need an instance of the game. So um, this can be private. This texture could be private my main game so let's go private red beard run uh, let's just call that game um, I want to pass in references to that well we already know that we're passing in um, when we did with red beard run we passed in the this right here so that means that this is a reference to this uh, class the instance of that class so I'm gonna go redbeard run and I could say game and let's say I actually do want to pass in that sprite batch that was created so I could say sprite batch batch okay now um, because I actually changed this that's actually showing up red so I can change that to I'm passing in a batch to all of those and you'll find that as you're kind of doing this you're going to end up wanting to make some changes and that's okay all right so I have that loading screen I'm now passing in at the game and the batch so once that's created we need to assign them to our variables for the loading screen class so I can say this dot game is equal to the game that I'm passing in and this dot batch is equal to the batch that I'm passing in and image image is equal to and let's go ahead and just copy that line just so we can see that it's working let's do this this is what we're doing image all right 
So now I have that image showing up, but the load screen I am going to do, uh, let's make this green. Okay. And if I undid this, you should see that it's not. All right, so it's there. That would be red if it's showing up and load screen, it's going to be green. So let's go ahead and run it now. Oh, it's going to give us errors until we fix those. So these other ones, we have to pass those instances. So let's do the same thing. We're going to do copy that to our main menu and main game and our credit screen. Now in each of those, we need a constructor. to generate all insert that's not that one all insert constructor and we want to pass in that sprite batch what else did we want to pass in that red beard run red beard run and call that game and then this our sprite batch okay so we have an instance of the game, red beard run game, and so we're saying this dot batch and this dot game is equal to game. Okay, and we're doing that again in our main game screen. Oops, I don't need two of them. So we need to alt insert, build the constructor. We want to pass in the game and the batch. Sprite batch, batch. So that would be this dot batch equals batch. And then we got to do one more just so that we can test it. Have to have private red beard run game, and then I build our constructor. I'll insert constructor. We want to pass in the game and the batch. I built it for us. Okay, so now we should have all the errors. Let's go ahead and test it on our desktop. So it should open up, show a green clear screen. So that's showing the red one, but we should be in our loading screen. <coughs> Excuse me. So if I go to the log cap, looks like I showed there. <coughs> Not until we open up the emulator. Loading screen. We're in loading screen show method, loading screen show method. Okay, so the issue then that we're facing when we're running with the Redbeard run is if we use this render, it is overriding everything in the screen. So if we comment this out, we go back to our code, block comment, control shift slash, and we run it again. So let's stop it. Let's run it again.
I usually like to do desktop first because um, it tends to load faster. Emulators are a little bit heavy on processing, but it gives you a better idea. All right. So there's the green. Let's look, see. Let's stop that. All right, so we had I'm saying, uh, and I'm going to run it in the emulator just to make sure, but we're in the loading screen show method. And then we, it's saying that we went to our Redbeard class, that we were in the create method, and then we went to the loading screen show method, and then we were in the render. And the render just kept getting called over and over and over and over and over and over and over. Okay, let's run that on Android and see if that's the exact same. So I switch to Android. Let's go ahead and run it. We'll just run on the Nexus. Now this we're going to actually have to look in the log cat as it's doing it. So it's setting up the initial software. Alright. Let's go ahead and stop it. Now let's look at our log cat. So it's telling us, according to this, we went into the show method first, and then we went to create, and then we went back to the show method, and then we were in the render. So, let's look at our code and make sure that that's the order that we want it to go. We are not calling the create screen until uh, that's why. Let's go ahead and cut that, put that here, where it really is. So we are in the create method and we create the screen. We go to loading. Okay. So now if we run it again, it's going to actually, it's because I put that code after we created it. So what we want to make sure that we see is that the order of how things are running are consistent with what we think. Um, nowhere did I see that resize get called, well, but that be, might be because I didn't change the, the method. Uh, the walk in loading screen resize. Let's do change that. Pause. Resume. And, and loading screen. Go ahead and do this for the dispose. Now 
And in the dispose, we are disposing that. Well, I don't need to dispose the batch there because I'm only using one. I am using that image though, so image dot dispose. Okay, so let's run this now and we'll see what it gives us. I'm going to actually minimize and back out to see so you guys can see the other methods getting called. Click the menu bar. Backed out. Get focus again. Click back. All right. Let's check what that does. Let's go ahead and stop it. Let's look at our log cap. All right, so we started. We were in the create method, and then we went to the loading screen, the show, which it did at once, and then it called the resize. And then we were in render until we did something. So we stayed in render. When I went to the, I clicked the menu on the phone, I paused it, our Android pause, okay, and then when we came back, it, res it resized again, it resumed, and then it started back into the render. When I hit back, it, again, um, backed out of it so we went into the render it paused when I clicked back and then it paused up and then it destroyed so the dispose hasn't been called it just destroyed everything so we got to be mindful of how we're um, having our stuff get called so what we see then right now is that uh, when I am in the loading screen I'm going to go into the show and I can run code and then it's automatically going to call resize and then it's bumping to render and when I go out of the screen it, causes, it calls pause and then it does what it needs to do when it comes back it's going to call resize and then it's going to resume did it call show again? Let's double check. So it seems like it only calls show the first time it goes in there. See, there's the show, then resize, then render. And then when we pause or we hit the menu and went pause, it did not go back to the show. It went to resize and then resume. So we got to be mindful that show only really shows up once when that screen comes up. If I went out of it and then came back to it, it's going to call show again. Okay, so that is, we basically set up um, menus. We could have this loading screen go to the main menu screen, and we're going to go ahead and do that because we have the game. Uh, so let's say... 
that in the render. After it does the image, it's going to go ahead and set that screen. So I'm going to go game dot set screen, and I give that screen type, and I want it to be the menu. So that screen type, if I pass that in, it's going to create that screen. Again, we could do gdx dot app dot log. And we do know that we want to use that tag, so we got to create that private static final tag uh, string tag equals main menu class and menu screen dot class dot get simple name. Okay, so tag and we're in a menu show go ahead and copy this main menu show this is render we could even put it here and say you know we're in the constructor Resize. Pause. Zoom. which we already know doesn't automatically get called. We have to call it. All right. So if we were in the loading screen, we can have it go. So let's say that we, we want to set a, uh, a time for it to actually set the screen to loading screen. So it's not just automatically do it. We can see it running. So let's do a private float and we'll call it uh, time to wait all right so we do an initial let's let's give it two seconds to f all right in our render we want to call this but we want it to subtract from that. So if our initial time was 2, we want it to subtract until it's at 0. So time to wait minus equals delta. So that's the change that happens for each screen. It's going to measure that as a unit of time. So the time to wait, we're going to subtract the delta from that, and that starts at 2. So if uh, time to wait is less than or equal to zero, then we will load that screen and we can go ahead and reset time to wait back to two. And that would make it so that if we went back to the screen, it will um, reset that timer. So if we ran that now, it should run and render for approximately two seconds and then switch over. So let's go ahead and let's actually do another print. And let's call it delta time. So time to wait. And then we can add. So this is where I like to use the log because I can track data as it's moving through and see where we're at. Now if I put it here, it's only going to show once it's already equal or less than zero. So I'm going to need to actually put it 
after when I switch the, um, I subtract the delta from the time to wait. So if we go ahead and run this, we're going to jump into the main menu screen. Now we don't have anything set up for the main menu, so it's just going to run. So now I'm on the loading screen. A few seconds and it should switch. However, I believe we're already there. Main menu render, but we're not rendering anything. We're not even clearing out that last screen. So if I just copied this bit right here for the main menu screen, so even though I transferred the main menu, let's go ahead and make that blue, I never cleared out the screen, so it paused on that last frame when it switched. So now if we run it again, we should be able to see the switch. It's going to go green, stay there for approximately two seconds, and then go blue. All There it is, it switched. Okay, so let's go ahead and stop it and then we can look. So, we jump to the loading screen, we went in the show, then called the resize, then called the render. Time to wait. Let's see how it's subtracting. and it's still calling render. As soon as it went under, that's when it ended up switching over. Then we went to the main menu show, the resize, and then we were in the render. That's where we end up clearing a different color so we could see that it was switching. Okay, so what you guys need to do is you need to be switching, setting up all of your screens so that you can navigate to each one. So loading screen, ultimately what we're going to end up doing with this, now that we've got to have it flowing, is we're going to end up using that for loading all of our assets. So we need to have our loading screen set up um, where once it's done, that's when we can transition to the next screen. Our main menu screen is so that we can do our options um, where we can either load the game or we can go to this credit screen uh, and see all the stuff that we did to build the game. <clears throat> so from the main menu we can go to the main game screen now either we could go back to the main menu screen or you know if we die or win then we can go back uh, can go to the credit screen so if it wasn't loaded at all it's going to create it and load it for us or uh, it's going to just load what was already there so what you guys need to do is you need to do the same thing. I would suggest that you also um, uh, 
create the log messages for every method that gets called and you do a different color clearing um, so you don't have to just use one you could use um, uh, decimals so I could do if I did like 0.25 for red green and blue it's going to be kind of a grayish color um, so that you guys can see that the menus are switching you could even switch the images and we're going to get into that just so that you can see that your menu screens are now set up and you could be able to use them.